Hey, what's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another philosophy video. This one more about teams themselves. Uh, the previous one was teams versus tags. Just because everyone shares a tag doesn't mean they're a team. Uh, like, Gamora is not a member of the Guardians team, even though she has the tag, etc., etc. This is more uh, of a concept I talk a lot about on my stream called uh, Trinities, Trios. The most teams in this game, actually, I think right now, all teams in this game, but most teams in this game have uh, three tentpole characters that kind of represent everything the team is trying to do, and every other character on the team, uh, or option for characters on the team, kind of just extend what that value is. So let me go right into it and uh, show you one example, but I am going to start with a disclaimer. In the perfect world, all of your characters would be completely invested in to the max, right? Like, we'll use the Asgardians as an example. In in the perfect world, all of my characters would be Gear Tier 14, 7775, uh, level 75, max red stars. We don't live in that world. That's, you know, getting a character to seven star, seven red star max investment just from a financial cost is thousands of dollars, especially to do it on characters that aren't necessarily as high impact as some others. So what you want to look at is what the core of the team does and who will benefit the most from your investment. This doesn't really include tier fours for the most part. Some might. Uh, this is mostly about gear level, uh, who you should spend the most time working on, stars, etc. And we'll use the Asgardians because they're an actual perfect example. On paper, it's very obvious who the best characters on this team are. It's like Hela, and then it's Loki, and then Thor, Sif, and Heimdall, usually in that kind of order. Hela has a lot of value outside, Loki has a lot of value outside of the team, Thor works very well on the team, and not as much outside, but works really well with Hela. Heimdall and Sif really don't do much outside of their teams. But when you look at the entirety of the team, they have a purpose, right? So the Asgardians' purpose right now is to be a war defense team. That's it. So, in order to make this team the best version of a war defense team, without having access to an infinite supply of resources, you get to look at which characters are required to be good and which characters are not so much. In this case, the Trinity, the, the perfect trio for the Asgardians, are Hela, Thor, and actually Sif. Um, while Loki is a phenomenal character, Absolutely nothing Loki does is dependent on his gear, his stats. He's a completely what we call kit character. His mind control, which you can absolutely tier 4 if you'd like to, uh, for the purposes of the Asgardian war defense team, it's totally adequate at the 6. Uh, and even then, even if you make him level 7, you don't need to have him at gear tier 13 or 14 all those things do is improve his survivability, not what the team's goal is. Uh, Hela, I think, goes without saying, right? You want to invest in Hela because she's good everywhere else, but also on the Asgardian team, the stronger Hela is, the more likely she'll survive, the more damage she'll do, and the more likely those Gregs will do more damage that she summons as other characters go down. So, Hela makes perfect sense. Thor kind of also makes sense based on the strength of his passive, uh, gains damage, grants damage to other Asgardians, you know, whenever any enemy attacks an Asgardian, he gains a charge, and when he maxes charge, he attacks everybody and gives himself an ability energy. Like, that kind of makes sense. Like, that's pretty obvious. Thor is really good. You can actually just use Hela and Thor as a two-piece combo in, like, raids, and you'll start seeing a lot of extra damage as Greg keeps getting hit. The reason why Sif becomes the third most important member of this team, as opposed to characters like Heimdall and Loki, is that Sif helps charge Thor. And since that's the core of what this team is doing, Hela spreading debuffs, and on the death of Asgardians, he's summoning additional Gregs, Sif's job is to take damage. 
So every time she takes damage, Thor gets a charge. If your Sif is strong enough to survive multiple attacks, Thor might use his passive before he even takes his first turn. And that's pretty much it. Like, the stronger your Hela and Thor are, the more this incidental damage you do is great. And sure, Heimdall does some AoE damage, but again, Heimdall pretty much just exists right here. As Guardians are resistant to blind, they have high focus, uh, heal some Carrick, heal himself a little bit, and on spawns the effect. None of these things require him to have a high investment, not even tier fours. He's going to do a lot of what he does just being in the fight. Kind of the same thing with Loki. Everything Loki's going to do, reducing the resistance to enemies, gaining focus, uh, his turn one mind control, and even mirror image. All of these things are completely independent of stat. So these characters can lag behind a little bit. They don't have to be as strong. If you're looking to build out a really strong Asgardian team, it's Hela, Thor, and Sith. Now you kind of got the understanding. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you why this team came out. A long time ago, we had Fury Shield as like the catch-all team. It was good in raids, it was good in arena, it was uh, good pretty much everywhere. Used it in Dark Dimension, used the entire Dark Dimension 1, used it pretty much everywhere. Uh, and the reason why was they were so core strong with character Nick Fury. The, the core of the old Fury Shield team was Nick Fury, Shield Security, and Shield Medic. Those were the three characters where if they were strong enough, whoever else you put on that team was going to do fine. Uh, a Shield Operative didn't necessarily need to be that strong. She got an increased focus from being on the team. She had a lot of speed, so she was ripping off buffs and giving them to Nick Fury. But she didn't need to necessarily survive uh, that well. She just kind of existed. Same thing with Shield Assault. Shield Assault wasn't a uh, well-known damage dealer on the team. She just added this passive that allowed characters 40% extra crit. Now, you'll notice I don't have a tier forward for my video on the Fury Shield. I don't need to because giving 40% extra crit chance to the Fury Shield gives them over 50%. Well, it wouldn't make it a higher chance. So just this gives them a 50% chance going from 50 to 60 the math doesn't really add up that often, especially considering where you're going to use these fights and how often they're going to go. You're more, you don't need the extra investment. But that said, it made sense to invest in those three characters and leave others behind. And we'll just use one more example, something a little bit more common. Uh, Guardians, you know? So your Guardians team, obviously, the full Guardians is Star Wars. Rocket, Drax, Groot, and Mantis. Gamora is not a part of the team. Uh, if your Drax and your Mantis aren't that strong, you're still relying on the strength of Star Wars, Rocket, and Groot. So those are the three characters that I would say you can invest the most in to make the Guardians team feel the best. Again, that's not going to solve every problem. Obviously, if you notice that you need a better healing, Mantis gets a little bit more. If you notice Drax is dying too quickly, that's about balancing. But the core of the Guardians team is the Star Wars, Rocket, and Groot package. You can even make them more modular. That was the core of the BKT, where you took out Drax and Mantis and added Thanos for his energy, a tank that provides energy, and Minerva uh, as just an overall better healer uh, with a really good ultimate. So, when you start looking at what teams, like Inhumans, Black Bolt, Yo-Yo, Crystal, Brotherhood, Juggernaut, Magneto, Pyro, Defenders, uh, eh, honestly, it's like Iron Fist, JJ, and Luke Cage, but at that point, why are you making a distinction? Hydra is Red Skull, uh, Ry uh, Hydra Armored Guard, and a Hydra Scientist, actually, to keep everybody alive. But Hydra Rifle Trooper is kind of a really close second uh, for war anyway. They, he adds the extra damage. Um, Mercs, Mercs is Merc Lieutenant, Merc Riot Guard, and Taskmaster. The other two Mercs don't necessarily matter because that's the core of the team. Once you understand where the, the best characters go and how uh, to best invest in them, you can kind of save resources a little bit. It's more of a priority. So Power Armor is another perfect example. 
Iron Man and Rescue, they don't need to be high investment. Both of them just kind of show up and do their job. Iron Man doesn't do a lot of damage, but his passive, you know, the ability to gain extra crit, uh, grant extra crit, and gain five damage per power armor ally, that's just something that he gives. Uh, the fact that he's present gives War Machine death proof, which is another reason why he's great on the team. But he doesn't need to be as invested as the other characters. Uh, Rescue, on the other hand, uh, Rescue, she doesn't do any damage. So the only reason you'd invest into her is to make her survive to use her special and her ultimate. And, and that's fine, but the real characters that are doing the work are Ironheart, formerly Vision, but Ironheart, uh, Falcon, and War Machine. Ironheart is damage, War Machine is the best damage on the team, and while Falcon's Red Wing doesn't necessarily require anything, it's just what it is, you don't need to invest a lot in him, when you're using Power Armor as a war team, because that's the team they are, you want that extra damage that he's going to get from Strafing Run, from his ultimate, as you're doing the fight. So adding more stats, making him more survivable, making him do more damage is exactly what this team needs, insofar that even if you lose rescue, uh, if Falcon and War Machine are strong enough, their AoE will do all of the work it needs to because of how the team comp works. So the entire idea of this video was not to go through every team and tell you. You can ask me questions about that if you'd like. Um, if you want to know about streams, stop by, even in chat and comments below, ask me questions like, hey, Sinister Six. And the entire point is to kind of sh like show you how to notice this. So you see a couple teams and you understand why this team has this trinity, you know, why this trio of characters is the most important investment and why the other characters are allowed to lag behind. Because once you understand that, it's going to be a lot easier for you to invest in characters in a way that's more helpful to you, especially for teams that require a lot of the same type of gear, like a ton of bio gear, a ton of tech gear, a ton of skill gear. You want to be able to make sure that you're investing correctly in the characters that will make the team better and then bringing up the rest of the characters. As you've seen through my roster, I have quite a few characters uh, that show that I'm not necessarily practicing what I preach, but that's also from testing that I didn't need to. I don't need to have a really strong uh, Falcon or Ironheart because my power armor team has been able to win the fights that I've been going into. That said, if I ever notice that I'm losing a lot of my power armor fights, those would be the first characters I invest in to make sure that everything works out. Um, there is no 100% only work on these characters line. It's more of a, these are the characters that do what the team's trying to do, or where the team's trying to do it. Raid, AIM for example, you know, it's Security, Scientist, Supreme, Graviton, the other two characters, whatever you want. What, those are the characters that make the team the team. Everyone else just kind of slot fills and provides some benefit. So you can keep them a little bit behind in investment while your resources are scarce. This way you make sure everything works out fine. Hopefully this information was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments on teams or trinities, feel free to you know leave them below or stop by my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Tony uh, I don't think there's anything else. And, and again, I do want to repeat... This doesn't mean that you shouldn't have all of the characters invested in, it just means that if you are choosing which characters to bring up first, these are where the values are going to go. Other than that, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.